Okay, 4-4, proving triangles congruent using angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. And so we're going to have some, some long definitions on these as well, and then I'll get to, a, get to a proof and show you how to use one, and then we'll be set to get the work done. So let's go with angle, side, angle first. Okay, here's my definition of angle, side, angle. And I'll read it to you and go ahead and hit pause and you can go ahead and write that down. If two angles in the included side of a triangle are congruent to two angles in an included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Again, keyword here is going to be included sides. Okay, included sides. Very important, just like yesterday, that they'll be between the angles. And so let's look at an example of what an included side would be. If I took a triangle, uh, just a basic triangle like this, okay, if I had, this was ABC, so I need two angles, so let's say this angle is congruent to that angle, so what is the side that's included between those two angles? In this case, BC is included between angle B and angle C. Again, that side is included between those two. Okay, so let's talk about angle, angle, side. Most of you can probably start seeing the pattern of these theorems, and you could probably write this out without me saying it. So let's go with angle, angle, side. Okay, so here's the next defin definition. We've got uh, angle, angle, side. Let me pull this one down here. There we go. Angle, angle, side says if two angles and the non-included side, this is going to be crucial. Actually, I want to do that in a different color because I did included in yellow. Side of a triangle are congruent to two angles and the non-included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So let's look at and see what non-included means. So I'm going to pull up a triangle again. I should use the same one I did before. Let's just call that ABC. I'm not sure if I labeled it that way last time. Okay, so if I have angle, angle, side, let's say that I know what this angle is and I know what this angle is. The non-included side would be either AB or BC. Okay, one of those two would be the non-included side. Okay, we would not use AC because that would be the included side. So let's take a look at a problem and let's get some practical application to it. Okay, we're going to do a quick two-column proof here. Uh, this is actually example number one at the top of page 274 if you want to follow along in your book. Uh, we're given this drawing of the two triangles, and so it's given us that QS bisects PQR, and it also tells us that PSQ is congruent to RSQ. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to use a different color pen on each one. Okay, PSQ, which is right here, is equal to... RSQ, which is right here, and also we know that if QS bisects PQR, that these two angles are congruent to each other. We're going to prove that in just a minute. And so we have two angles, and I can see an included side right there, so I'm going to do that in a different color.
I don't like the size of that. Just kind of do that in purple right across there. Okay, so my brain is already is already thinking, okay, I've got an angle, I've got a side, and I've got an angle that's included. So I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm going to try to prove this using angle, side, angle. Okay, so let's go to column proof and start proving it. Okay. Okay, so my first statement, I've got QS bisects PQR and that PSQ is congruent to RSQ. That is my given. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, define those equal angles that was given by our bisector. And so I'm going to call PQS and RQS congruent. Okay, PQS is congruent to RQS and that is by definition of an angle bisector. Okay, by de definition of an angle bisector. So now I have two angles congruent. I need to work on that side. We'll notice on our shape that obviously QS equals QS because it's the same side, but I need to know the reason. So let me extend this a little bit so I can write. QS is going to equal itself. Okay, and when something equals itself, um, that is the reflexive property. So we now have two sets of angles. We have the included side. So we are good to go on our proof in step four. And that's going to give us triangle PQS is congruent to triangle RQS because of, and again, you don't have to write the entire paragraph. We are just going with angle side angle. Okay, so four-step proof. Again, angle, angle, side will be the same, just given different, uh, given different properties of your triangles, they'll look different. And so that's angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side.